Joy in the city. Joy in your life. Joy in your family. And joy everywhere in Jesus' name. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria. The Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth. Young adults and professionals. Titled Recharge to Excel. December 27, 2022. At all 600 hours GMT. All broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms. With Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you for the beginning of this wonderful Congress. We thank you because you brought us together so you can give us solution to every problem. And we pray, Lord, in this Congress of Solution 96, every problem will find a solution in Jesus' name. We thank you for joining mercies you have granted us. Thank you for your protection upon your children. Thank you for being here. And we thank you because we know that it's going to be a special time for every one of us in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, you will touch every heart. You will deliver every oppressed person. Every bondage will be broken in Jesus' name. And we pray that for those who are very eager to know you and to see you, we are praying you reveal yourself unto them in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, that by your spirit, you speak to every one of us. And we pray that when we pray, every one of us will receive answers to our prayers. Speak to our hearts even tonight. And begin a great work in every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Already our time is gone. And we still need to share together, even if it's for a few moments. I'm asking you to please turn to John chapter 12, verse 20, verse 21, verse 22. John chapter 12, from verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was a Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. In verse 20, you have the mention of the Greeks. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. In those days, the Greeks were the educated people. They were the researchers. They were the people seeking after knowledge, seeking after wisdom. And yet, quite a number of them knew that their religion as well as their education was totally empty couldn't give them the satisfaction they want they wanted and so they came among the jewish people because it was a time of the feast for the jewish people and these greek people normally intellectual people seeking after wisdom and seeking after knowledge they mixed with the jewish people they worshiped they listened to everything there was to listen to. And then they knew something was still missing. They were as empty as when they came. They were as without direction, guidance as when they came. They felt there must be something we can have to fill the emptiness and the shallowness of life. That what their education, 
or seeking after wisdom and not been able to give them, there must be a way to have that satisfaction in the Lord. And so after they had worshipped, and they didn't get the real purpose and the essence of worship, they discovered Philip. And it says, they came therefore to Philip. He was a Bethsaida of Galilee. And they desired him. They said, sir, they showed respect to him, but they were not going to stop at him. They wanted him to show them Jesus. So they said, we would see Jesus. And Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. As we come over here, today's uh, conference, you might have different purposes in mind. But I want to tell you, the greatest purpose you can have in mind is to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you see him, they will be the end to all your problems. The blind, they come to him and they receive their sight. The sick, they see him, they receive healing. The oppressed, they see him and they are delivered. Those who are downtrodden in life, they see him, they are lifted up. And the people who are sinners, they see him, they are transformed and they are changed. Those who have been bound by the devil, by demons, they see him and they are delivered. And so the Greek said, Sir, we would see Jesus. I'm sure you know the construction of the sentence. We would see Jesus simply means we want to see Jesus. We desire to see Jesus. The purpose in our heart is to see the Lord. They wanted heavenly solution to their earthly problems because it's in Christ alone. You have heavenly solution to all earthly problems. And whatever problems were brought here, their solution 96, you'll find its real solution indeed in Jesus' name. Why did they want to see Jesus? Because of J is the joy of the earth. Because of E is the expectation of the Jews. Because of the next S is the savior of sinners. The youth there is the unsearchable riches for the poor in spirit. And the S is security of the believers. You want to see the Lord because it's the joy of the whole earth. The angels came to the shepherds watching, watching over their sheep by night. And they said, we come to declare unto you the good news that shall be great joy to all the earth. And that is what we bring to you tonight. Good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. And all of us who are here, as you really determined to see Jesus, you'll have the joy of the kingdom coming from the king in your heart in Jesus' name. If you are sorrowful, just come and see Jesus. You are sad, come and see Jesus. You have been weeping, come and see Jesus. And it appears you have problems over problems in your life. Come and see Jesus. You'll laugh before the end of this conference in Jesus' name. It's the joy of the whole earth. It's the desire of the nations. The expectation of the Jews. The ones that the people said, and we expected. It had been him that would have brought peace and solution to all the problems of the Israelites. They expected him. And the people among those Jewish people that saw him, they received the expectation that they were asking for. I'm sure you are looking for an expected end. And that expected end, the Lord will grant unto you. When the Samaritans eventually saw him, they told that woman, they said, now we believe in him, not because of what you have said alone, but because we have seen him. We have known him. We have experienced him. We have heard from him. And we know that this is the savior of the world. You come to see him so that he will be the savior for you if you have been a sinner. The Lord will turn your life around. He will forgive you. He will change your life. Everything that is negative now will become positive in Jesus' name. This is the unsearchable riches for the poor in spirit. All the Lord needs from you is that you will know you have nothing, but you have everything in him. That your knowledge, your ability, your skill, whatever it is you have, will not help you completely in time and in eternity. Therefore, you come to him, poor in spirit, humble and submissive before him, so that he'll be the unsearchable riches in your life. 
And when you become a believer by abiding in him, you have security in the Lord. Come back to that John again, chapter 12. In John chapter 12, you have seen that these Greeks said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. And then Philip told Andrew. Andrew and Philip came and they told the Lord. And then the Lord said in verse 23, Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. I believe the hour that the Son of God will be glorified in your life, that hour has come. If you are sincerely seeking the Lord, and you really want to see the Lord, I believe that you will see greater than your expectation in Jesus' name. Even though our time is gone, let me quickly give you three points. Number one, the promise of sincere seekers. The promise for sincere seekers. In John chapter 1, John chapter 1, reading from verse 45, then Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and in the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip says unto him, Come and see. Before you meet the Lord, there could be a lot of doubts in your mind. Maybe you have been carrying a lot of problems about, and you are wondering, could anything come out of Solution 96? Could anything come out of this outskirts of Lagos? Could anything come out of this village surrounding? Could anything come out of this place that's like a retreat out of uh, the hub and the noise of the center of the town? What will I get here that I couldn't have got in the major city I came from? No argument, come and see. You'll tell the story yourself after the conference. You'll give the testimony yourself after the conference in Jesus' name. Because a moment with the Lord will change your life. Will turn everything around. All the tears who have worked up till this time, everything will be wiped away. Philip attested the Lord. He had known the Lord. He called this uh, Nathaniel. He said, uh, Nathaniel, uh, why don't you come? We have found him. We have seen him. We have experienced him. We have got a bit of what he came with from heaven. And Nathaniel said, Do you mean that it's out of Nazareth that I will, ha I will have the solution to all my problems? The smallest of the towns over there in Israel. One of the most insignificant towns in Israel. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said, come and see. And thank God he didn't argue. Again, he said, if it's to come and see, I'll go there and I will see. And you have come here. If you will be patient, you are going to see something. If you are going to be humble, you are going to see something. Just uh, this year, uh, somebody was uh, coming from another country. And actually, he missed the date of the conference we invited them for. And uh, we had had the January Congress here for our leaders coming from all over the countries. But uh, he got a letter late. And uh, eventually, maybe he didn't read uh, what we wrote in the letter. And eventually he came and when he came uh, before he came somebody was begging him somebody said over there in his country see pastor i am dying and i want to go with you to the conference and the pastor the brother said the conference is not for ordinary people it's only for the key leaders of this church and they have invited us to come over there so that we can benefit in the program but uh, the fellow said, you leave me to die in a country like this because the man had AIDS. And it was at the last stage. The man was about dying. And uh, eventually, because of uh, compassion and uh, because of sympathy, the pastor said, all right, but I'm not promising you that they will allow you to, uh, to, allow, to get into the conference. You will just stay in the hostel. Then I will plead with our leader. If he can give you a few minutes and pray for you, then you go back to your country. And uh, the fellow said, that's all right. If I can just have prayer, that will be enough for me. Mm -hmm. And so eventually they came. When I saw the pastor, I said, but you are late. The whole program is over. 
We've rounded up everything. He said, I got here. I knew that I missed any date. How could you miss the date like that after that? He said, well, I will listen to the cases. And then he said, sir, I brought somebody for my country. Not just a man, a man and his wife. They are dying. They are the last stage of AIDS. You know what is called AIDS? I said, you know what is called AIDS? Now, wake up, you are in a class. When the teacher asks a question, if you don't know, you'll say no. If you know it, you'll say yes. Do you know what they call it? Yeah. Okay, class, you are waking up now. Now, uh, so this man and the wife, they were at the last stage. And uh, the man uh, came to see me, and I said, what's the problem? He said, look at me, I am dying. And if uh, the wind blew too much, that man could fall down. It was uh, drying up like a dry stick. And, uh, but he said, I heard that the power of God is here. And I came to see for myself. And I said, that's right, Jesus is here. Once to meet Jesus Christ, it will vanish away. It shall vanish away. Every problem will vanish away. So I told him and his wife, I said, let us pray. And then I mentioned the name of Jesus. And he saw Jesus by faith, not physically. Saw him by faith. And then I said, bye bye, go back to your country. There was no singing. There were no crosses. There was no message. There was no Bible study. There was no seminar. Just two, three minutes prayer. And he went back to his country. And I had the privilege of uh, going for a program in Cameroon this uh, year, uh, just uh, last month. And then I saw that pastor, and the pastor ran to me and said, Pastor, Pastor, something happened. I said, tell me about it. He told me that man and the wife, they went back to the hospital. After they got back to their country. And the doctor tested them, and the doctor almost uh, had a shock that gave him heart attack. He said, no AIDS anymore. AIDS had vanished away. And I'm assuring you that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, your problems will vanish away. Just a moment with the Lord. Because it's the joy of the whole earth. You will be joyful. Sorrow and sadness, everything will flee away in Jesus' name. You see here, we have the promise to the sincere seeker. If you are very sincere, and you are seeking the Lord, and you say, we would see Jesus, I want to see Jesus, you will see him, he will bless your life in Jesus' name. In verse 50, Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. Whatever testimony you have heard, you will see greater things than those testimonies. Whatever miracle you have heard happen to other people, you will see greater things in Jesus' name. Only make up your mind. I will see Jesus. Now, if you don't make up your mind, you are going to see Jesus. There's a large crowd. You are going to see quite a lot of other things. You may see people in the hostel that will discourage you. If that is what you are looking at, you may not get much. You may look at the community here, the surrounding here. There may be some things you don't like. If you focus your attention on that, you are going to be a loser. But the way I look at you, you are not going to be a loser. You are going to be a winner. And so, but you look at the right person. You look at Christ. You will not look at a man. You know, they go to Philip. And they didn't say, Philip, let's see you. Let's know you. Let's have what you have. They said, take us beyond yourself. We want to see Jesus. Don't look at the preachers. The preachers may have something to offer, but look beyond them and get what is beyond them. Once you see the Lord, you are going to get what the Lord really has. There's a man that wanted to see the Lord. He was a sincere seeker. In Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 1, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus. That's what to do. Seek to see him. Endeavor to see him. Make an effort to see him. He sought to see Jesus who he was. And could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. That was the purpose in his heart. He saw the crowd. That didn't satisfy him. Maybe he saw the disciples. That didn't satisfy him. He had, had a lot about the Lord. That didn't satisfy him. He wanted to see the Lord for himself. Then he said, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. If you really determine to see the Lord, 
you are going to make every effort that he takes every effort that he demands some people say it's very difficult uh, to see the lord it's very difficult to taste of the goodness of the lord if you really make an effort i'm sure you are going to see him and when you see him your life is going to be turned around and when jesus came to the place he looked up and saw him he wanted to see the lord the lord saw him if there are people there tonight and it's in your heart that you want to see the lord in this conference the lord will spot you out he will know you are looking for him he will appear to you he may appear to you while we're preaching or while we're praying or while you're in the hostel or while you're sleeping but i'm sure if there is that desire in your heart if you are sincere about it if you are telling the lord i will not leave this place until i see the lord the lord himself will identify you he will locate you where you are he will see you and he will make himself manifest unto you in jesus name and he said unto him Zacchaeus, he even knew his name and he knows your name he knows your need he knows your desire he knows your aspiration he knows what you want he knows why you are here make haste and come down make haste and come down for today i must abide at thy house you will take jesus back home yeah. you will take the riches of christ back home yeah. the salvation of the lord you will take it back home yeah. once you see the lord there will be a part of heaven that will be dropped in your soul and you will take that back home and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully and when they saw it they all murmured and say, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that was a sinner can you see the use of the word saw there they saw it they didn't see him they saw it what does that mean they saw what happened they saw the event they saw the thing that happened between jesus and Zacchaeus. although they saw the lord but they didn't really see him with faith they didn't see with great expectation they didn't see with any real spiritual desire they only saw him to judge him they only saw him to judge what he did they saw each and then they said he is gone to be with a man that is a sinner but Zacchaeus will not pay attention to them Zacchaeus stood and said unto the lord behold lord the half of my goods i give to the poor and if i've taken anything from any man by false accusation i restore him fourfold a change came into his life he was stingy before now he became generous he was a thief before now he was not going to be a thief anymore he was going to even make restitution and jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he also is a son of abraham do you know you can have the fullness of salvation do you know you can have salvation from the lord he can save you and he will save you if you need to be saved in jesus name this day the day you meet the lord this day the day you make up your mind i'm going to see the lord this day the, the day you grab him by faith and you hold on to him and you say i want what he has got for me for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost but are there people that want to see jesus out of a sinful selfish desire oh yes there are that leads me to point number two problems of selfish sinful seekers you see there are people that also say i want to see the lord to you i want to see jesus to you but jesus does not reveal himself unto such people because they're selfish they're sinful they're not willing to repent in luke chapter 23 luke chapter 23 verse 8 and when herod saw jesus he was exceeding glad for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had had many things of him and he had hoped to have seen some miracle done by him if you notice in that verse the word see is used three times and it is used in the uh, conjugation in the three parts of conjugation you see number one it says 
when Herod saw Jesus, past tense, and then he had desired to see him of a long time, to see him, the infinity. And then it says, he had hoped to have seen, past participle. Although every form of the word see was used in his own case, he didn't get anything. Now can you see people like that? Although they have desired to see, and they saw, and they hope to have seen, and yet they get nothing. The question is, why? Is it that everything we can say about see or seeing is applicable to them? And here was Jesus Christ in front of the man, and yet he got nothing because he wasn't a sincere seeker. Because he wasn't willing to repent of his sin. Because like Herod, he was still sitting on the throne. And he felt he will sit on the throne and Jesus will stand there and he'll be asking Jesus question. He was acting like a king. He was acting like an exalted person. He was acting like a statue fellow that will not bend the knee, that will not bow before the Lord. He looked at Jesus as just a person that will perform wonders for him. But there was no desire for any change in his life. Look at verse 9. And you will see that Jesus didn't behave like this to many, many people. He behaved in such a wonderful way to the people that were sincere. In verse 9, and then he questioned with him in many words. But he answered him nothing. He saw him. He even asked him questions. He wanted to know the solution to this, the solution to that. And he questioned him, not just for a few minutes, in many, many words. And Jesus was just looking at him like this. As he looked at him, he saw the corruption of his heart. As he looked at him, he saw the pride in his heart. As he looked at him, he saw that he was totally sinful and he wasn't wanting to touch that area. Jesus was just looking at him and the man was talking. Will you show me this? Will you tell me this? You reveal this to me? This is my expectation. I want this one. I want the man was just talking and talking. He was talking with authority. He was talking like a king. He was commanding. I, I'm telling you, tell me this. Show me this. Are you this? Are you that? And Jesus was just looking at him. Although you saw the Lord, he got nothing. Come down from your ivory tower if you want to see the Lord. Come back, come down from your throne of pride if you want to see the Lord. Come down from that touchy kind of attitude, thinking that you will hold on to everything you have without giving up your sin, and you think you are going to see the Lord. Come down in humility. Come down in surrender. Come down in subjection to the Lord. Come down in yieldedness to the Lord and abandon yourself in the hands of the Lord and kneel before him and bend before him and bow before him and be humble before him and be subdued before him. Come out, come away from that throne where you are sitting. Come away from that seat of pride where you are and say, Lord, I am nothing. If you will say that before the Lord, he will pour into your life everything that heaven can supply in Jesus' name. But you know, the people that have selfish motive, and they're not seeking the Lord because of a right purpose, a right motive, they may even see him physically, but they get nothing. That's the problem of selfish, sinful seekers. In John chapter 6, John chapter 6, verse 25, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, meaning master, teacher, when comest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him has God the Father sealed. The Father has appointed him. The Father has anointed him. And the Father has sealed him, set him up, so that he will be the source of all blessings to all people. But you see, these people were seeking after him. And eventually they saw him. And he said, Master, teacher, when did you come over here? And Jesus, instead of answering them, instead of revealing something to them from heaven, instead of blessing them more, he said, but you're not seeking me for the right purpose. It's because you ate the loaves and you're filled. 
It's because of material things, material reason. You're seeking for me. It's not because of spiritual reality or spiritual experience. Then he said, labor not for the meat that perisheth. The thing you eat and then you become hungry about a few hours later. But for that meat, which is spiritual, which endureth unto everlasting life. I pray that you will seek the Lord, you will find the Lord. But it is only when you are searching for him with all your heart. Our time is running out. Let me give you point number three. The pursuit of saved, sanctified seekers. The pursuit of saved, sanctified seekers. You see, when you really get saved, you'll be able to seek the Lord in the right way. Because uh, the uh, heart that is not born again will be selfish. The heart that is not born again will be seeking the Lord for a selfish purpose. A selfish reason. But when you become born again and sin is taken away and pride is taken away and you are humble and submissive before the Lord, then you realize that now in your heart there is that genuine desire that you really want to see the Lord and you want to see the beauty in the face of the Lord and the glory in his life as well as the blessing from his hand. In Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When there is that uh, maximum concentration and you are seeking the Lord with everything within you. And you are making up your mind, I will not go, I will not leave until I see the Lord. I want a change in my life. I want the expectation of my heart. I want the fulfillment of the promises of the Lord. I want a definite touch from the Lord. I want to see the Lord. You are not just uh, roaming around here wanting to see, wanting to have a girlfriend. Wanting to see, wanting to have a boyfriend. Wanting to see or wanting to have any other thing which is not really from the Lord. You're seeking the Lord. You're searching for the Lord. And you're saying, yes, I want to see him. And it is when you really seek for him like that, he will bless your life. If you have not been saved, he will save you. But after being saved, that's not the end of seeking the Lord. In fact, after you have been saved, that's the time to begin to really seek the Lord. You seek the Lord for him to make you holy. To sanctify you, to purify you, and to do a lot of other things in your life. And then after you are sanctified, that's the time you really know now how to seek the Lord in a very definite sense. You are sanctified, you keep on seeking the Lord. He fills you with the Holy Ghost. And what a wonderful thing when the Holy Ghost is third personality in the Trinity when it comes into you. Because then he shows you how to now seek the Lord and what to seek the Lord for. And you keep on seeking the Lord like that. And every time you will see the Lord when you seek him. In Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. Why? Because, for they shall see God. When you are purified in the heart, sanctified in the heart, purified in your soul, and you are still seeking the Lord, then will you see the Lord. You see, it takes some people a very long time before they get what they are asking for. The reason is they leave holiness apart, they push uh, sanctification aside, they leave purity of heart aside, and they're seeking the Lord for another thing. But when you are holy, when you are pure, when you are sanctified, when your heart is transparently righteous, holy, perfect before the Lord, seeking the Lord will become very, very easy. And everything you are seeking the Lord for, you will be able to have. And if you will make up your mind, during this uh, meeting that you will seek the Lord in that way until he sanctifies you and continue seeking the Lord, even after you are sanctified, you will see him in Jesus' name. And then, at the end of time, when the Lord shall come, the people that will see the Lord are the people that have been seeking the Lord and have been made holy. Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah 33 verse 17. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. During this meeting, 
if you will seek the lord in the right way you will see the king in his beauty and that land that is afar off even the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven you will see that land that is afar off you will hear the voice of god you will see the beauty of his holiness you will see the glory that sinners have lost you will see the blessings of the lord and on that final day when the lord jesus christ will come you will see him on that day in first john chapter 3 verse 2 beloved now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what shall, what we shall be but we know that when it shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is those who seek him today who are saved they seek him today they are sanctified and during this conference you seek him until he pours the whole of heaven into your heart on the final day when he will come those are the people that will see him you have the promise of the lord if you are sincere and you have this pursuit that you want to see the lord while you are here do it like zacchaeus did it push every hindrance aside and say i will not go back as i came in i will not go back from day solution 96 empty-handed i will see the lord i will touch the lord he has seen me already where i am he knows all my problems he is going to take all these problems away i am not going to be the same again i am going to see the lord in his glory and in his beauty if you really want to see the lord during this conference you are going to really concentrate on prayer you are going to push every hindrance aside and you are not going to allow anything to hinder you and then at the end of this conference you'll be able to testify i came i sought the lord i have seen the lord then you'll be able to show us the evidence you'll be able to say before i came this was missing in my life look at it now i've got it this was absent from my life sanctification look at it now i saw the lord i've got it before i came i was weak i didn't have power the power of the holy ghost but i saw the lord he filled me with the holy ghost look at the evidence now the power and the boldness before i came i had no faith but i saw the lord during this conference now i don't only really have ordinary faith i have great strong mountain moving faith before i came i was seen i was almost like i was dying but i saw the lord a great physician all the sickness in my body everything has been taken away before i came it was like there was no purpose i was living for i was just aimlessly walking about although i was studying it was like life had nothing for me i saw the lord he has put purpose goal motivation inside my spirit inside my soul i am going back a different sister a different brother before i came i was afraid of everybody and everything but now i have seen the lord face boldness power authority has entered into me now i'm going back a changed person will that happen to you let's rise up and you will tell the lord i don't want to come here empty-handed i want to see the lord i want to see the lord sir we would see jesus we want to see jesus see him and get saved see him and get sanctified see him and be healed see him and be delivered see him and let the yoke be broken see him and let that infirmity get away from you see him and let power come into your life see him and let purpose come into your life see him and there will be a change see him there will be a transformation see him everything you have lost will get it again see him there will be a revival see him the riches of heaven unsearchable riches of heaven will come into your soul see him all your fear will vanish away see him all your need will be made see him all your problems will be solved see him and you'll get the solution to all your problems see him and there will be security see him and there will be power in your life see the lord see the lord see the lord see the lord sir we would see jesus sirs we would see jesus see him and let him purify your heart see him 
and let him change your life. See him and let him heal your body. See him and let him break the yoke. See him and be blessed. See him and be filled with the Holy Ghost. See him and be touched in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, in your spirit, in your body. See him and have a new direction in your life. See him and see the right unsearchable riches of glory of the kingdom of God. See him, let there be transformation. I came to see the Lord. I came so I could see Jesus. I came so I could touch the Lord. I came so I could receive the Lord. Sir, I want to see Jesus. Sir, don't stand between me and Christ. I want to see Jesus. Don't allow any man, any woman to stand between you and the Lord. Make up your mind. I will see the Lord. Don't allow your education to hinder you. Sir, I will see the Lord. Don't allow your position, the position of Herod, to hinder you, sir. I will see the Lord. Don't allow your argument to hinder you, sir. I will see the Lord. Don't allow your philosophy. your pretense your hypocrisy to hinder you sir i will see the lord don't allow talkativeness to hinder you sir i want to see the lord Don't allow food to hinder you. Sir, I will see the Lord. Don't allow too much sleep to hinder you. Sir, I will see the Lord. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Herod saw him and got nothing. But Zacchaeus saw him and he got salvation. The Pharisees saw him and got nothing. But the publicans saw him and they got salvation. The Sadducees saw him and they got nothing. But the prostitutes and the sinners who are willing to repent, they saw him and they got forgiveness. Many of the people in Nazareth where he was brought up, they saw him and they got nothing because of their unbelief. The gentle women from the coast of Sidon and Tyre, they saw him and they got everything they needed. The Sanhedrin in the synagogue, they saw him and they got nothing. But the centurion, a Gentile, he saw him and he got everything he wanted. Do not allow your pride to hinder you. Lord, I want to see you. My Savior, I want to see you. My Redeemer, I want to see you. Oh, Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, I want to see you. 
the sanctifier of believers, I want to see you. Baptizer in the Holy Ghost, I want to see you. The great physician, I want to see you. The coming King of Kings and the Lord of Love, oh Lord, I want to see you. You for him, said for him, seek him and see him. See him. If you want to see him, he has seen you already. He has located you where you are. If you will make up your mind, nothing will hinder me. Nothing will stop me. I will see the Lord. Even tonight you can begin to see the Lord. Even tonight you can begin to see the Lord. And He will begin to bless you. And pour into your life blessings from on high. Blessings from heaven. Nobody will hinder me. A young man will not hinder me. That young woman will not hinder me. I will seek the Lord and I will see him. Inconveniences of the camp here will not hinder me. I am going to seek the Lord and I will find him. I will see him. The crowd will not hinder me. The Jews will not hinder me. The Gentiles will not hinder me. My family will not hinder me. Daddy or mommy will not hinder me. Friends will not hinder me. Books will not hinder me. Education will not hinder me. University will not hinder me. Crisis will not hinder me. Sir, I want to see the Lord. 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 Yes, if you seek the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and you will not allow the pride of education, the argument of philosophy, you will not allow science or whatever to hinder you say, yes, I want to see the Lord. You will see him. You will see him. You will see him. He will reveal himself to you. And it will touch your life. You will never be the same again. He will turn you around. He will transform you. He will save you. He will sanctify you. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. You will become so holy. You will become so pure. You will become so transparent. You will have the touch of heaven. You have the riches of heaven. Right in your soul. Sir, I want to see the Lord. I want to see the Lord. I want to see the Lord. Let nothing hinder you. You are here to seek Him and to see Him. Seek Him until you find Him. Seek Him until you see Him.